five. Good, there's some attendees coming in. Just gonna make sure. Hopefully the transcription is working. Good, we've got quite a few attendees uh, in. Just for the panelists, can you give me the nod that you can see my screen? Great. So we'll give it a minute and then we'll get started. Excellent, and we're recording. Okay, well, I'm going to get things underway this evening and welcome everybody to this webinar on the Let's Talk Enfield Town project. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Um, just to let you know, as is on the screen, the meeting is being recorded and it's going to be uploaded to the Let's Talk Enfield Town website after this session. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Questions are going to be taken after the presentations have finished. Um, you can submit a question by using the Q&A function if you want to do that in writing, or you can uh, raise your hand as a participant. Um, and if you do raise your hand, I'll call on you after the presentation, uh, allow you to unmute and then ask your question. Moving into the uh, agenda for this evening, um, doing a little bit of introduction, I'm going to get the uh, panellists to introduce themselves momentarily. Uh, then we'll move into a presentation on uh, the engagement on the Let's Talk Enfield town project to date. Then we're going to move into a presentation on the emerging uh, public spaces proposals uh, in Enfield town. Then we'll talk about the next steps for the project and then we'll move into a Q&A and hopefully we'll wrap up at around about 7.20, 7.25, depending on the number of questions that we have. So I'm going to get each panellist to introduce themselves. Um, in, in no particular order. Aga, would you like to introduce yourself quickly? Just on mute. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Agnieszka Jezielska. I'm the project manager. Brilliant. Over to Tim. Hi, I'm Tim Seth. I'm a principal landscape architect for LDA Design, working on behalf of council. Liz. Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Rhodes, the Healthy Streets Public Relations Manager. Brilliant. And uh, Richard and Richard's just going to give a very brief overview of the Let's Talk Enfield Town project as, as well. So Richard, over to you. Thanks, Ollie. Yes, my name's uh, uh, Richard. Good evening, everyone. I'm the Healthy Streets uh, Programme Director. So uh, the Enfield Town project is, is, is one project within uh, my portfolio of work. So thank you very much for coming along uh, this evening. I think this Enfield Town um, project is a really exciting project. We're looking to sort of reshape and redefine uh, the town centre, uh, looking into the future, looking at ways and how we can improve the look and feel, how can we make the, the town centre a greener, healthier, more, more accessible place. Um, but whilst doing that, really focusing and, and accentuating the many sort of unique and interesting characteristics that, that the town already has. Um, so we're not trying to create something new in that sense, um, but we are trying to create a, a town centre where many more people want to travel to and, and can travel to in a range of different ways and that when they get there it's 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 a really great place to, to spend time and to spend money um, and, and to hang out in so so that's sort of the sense of what we're trying to do and I think as we go through uh, tonight's presentations you'll get a sense of of the journey that we're on and there's still a lot more work to to, um, to take place um, um, and hopefully through some of the things that we'll show you, you get a feel for, for how the work is progressing. Brilliant, thanks Richard. And uh, it was a bit remiss, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, my name's Oliver Deed. Um, I, I run a community engagement consultancy called ECF and we've been working with Enfield Council on the Let's Talk Enfield Town project now since uh, 2019. So, um, and 
I'll segue now into um, my element of the, the presentation this evening, just to update people on um, the feedback that we've had from the rounds of engagement that we've done on the project to date. So um, over the last uh, few months, you, you may well have attended a webinar or a public spaces co-design uh, workshop um, to discuss various different elements of um, the Let's Talk Enfield Town project. Um, the last phase of engagement, uh, if you like, was uh, specifically focused on uh, four uh, public spaces in Enfield Town and some um, proposed changes um, in terms of the highways in Enfield Town. So I just want to give a take everybody back to sort of the start back in September 2019. Um, we launched the Let's Talk Enfield Town um, a project uh, the heady days before uh, COVID existed and uh, we had a whole series of uh, events including workshops, pop-up sessions and uh, school visits to establish uh, design principles for the future vision uh, for Enfield Town. We also had meetings with a whole series of stakeholder and representative groups. We established the Enfield Town uh, Consultative Group which has met uh, since it was formed in September 2019 and over over 3,000 people uh, engaged in the process in, in one way, shape or form. So that may well have been uh, they downloaded an element of the plans, they would provided a comment, they responded to a survey, they participated in one of the pop up sessions that, that we ran um, and, we, and we got a, a really good level of engagement which culminated in the establishment of the five design principles that you can see on the right hand side. Um, of the, the screen um, and this really set up a series of design principles that, that we are testing um, the proposed interventions uh, against um, in, as part of our consultation process. So then we moved into uh, phase two um, and this ran between October 2020 to November 2020 and uh, effectively consisted of a consultation on a uh, proposed plan for Enfield Town. You can see that on the right hand side that was downloaded by well over a thousand people. So um, people have had a good look at that. That included measures such as the introduction of a 20 mile per hour limit across Enfield Town and a whole series of, uh, of different measures. And that map is still on the Enfield Town, Let's Talk Enfield Town website. So you can still view that. Um, we also did, a, and, and this is going to form the large part of the focus this evening, uh, convene a co-design process um, on four um, public spaces in Enfield Town, many of them uh, recognisable, Fountain Island, uh, the Enfield Town Station Plaza, the Library Green and, and Town Park entrance. These are uh, very recognisable spaces and also um, a proposed new space, um, which has got a, the working title of Sadler's Mill Square. So we had a really, really enjoyable process of co-design with um, lots of residents and Across the entirety of the process, um, we had about 3,700 people um, engage, either by downloading um, the plans, participating in an event, completing the survey. Um, there were multiple different ways that people got involved. And so just to talk a little bit about the approach for phase two, um, appreciate that the, the COVID struck in, uh, in October, November, there, was, there were quite heavy restrictions in terms of what could be done. Uh, physically, so we developed what we call a digi digital-led COVID-19 compliant engagement approach, which consisted of three online presentations, similar to the one that you're attending this evening, uh, four co-design workshops on the four spaces, um, the Engagement HQ site. That was um, the, that the next iteration of that was published, um, and obviously everybody everybody has registered to attend the session this evening through that particular platform. We had um, a series of stakeholder meetings, um, meetings of the Enfield Town Consultative Group, uh, and we did uh, a series of physical mail shots to, to raise the profile um, of the process. Um, and here's really a summation of uh, the number of people that visited the, the website, people, people that downloaded uh, some of the materials, um, you know, the responses that we had to the survey, um, and the summation there of the uh, events programme. And, and this presentation will be available uh, online so you can look at that at your leisure. And the report is also published on Let's Talk Enfield Town as well. Um, so what I just wanted to do was just to show, um, this will be recognisable to some of the people that are on, on this call because I recognise some of the names, but what we did in that co-design process was um, we had a blank um, plan for each of the spaces. Um, and we set up a sort of a virtual post-it note um, method through Google Jamboards that allowed people to really give us some ideas about what they would like the future of 
each of these particular spaces uh, to look like. So we've sort of broke out into different different tables and um, sort of compared notes at the at the end of the session. Had a really really enjoyable um, discussion. This is this is Enfield Town Plaza. Um, you know, talk, talk about new identity for for this particular space. The importance of, of recognising the role that greenery and, and water and heritage and the such like play um, play in Enfield Town. And we had some really good ideas around the Enfield Beast Trail, although that wasn't necessarily universally um, uh, welcomed. And you know, we've, this is basically what team, Tim and his team at LDA Design have been looking at in terms of shaping their proposals moving forwards. Uh, and here's here's a, a really sort of busy um, example of um, the Sadler's Mill Square um, base um, blank base plan that we looked at and edited, and um, some really really good ideas for for, for this particular space as, as well. So we obviously ran a ran a survey as part of the process as well, and uh, I've just really uh, included a bit of a demographic breakdown of the people that participated. So we had 234. Uh, responses um, in in total and um, mo most people were resident in Enfield Town but there were some people that worked or visited Enfield Town that did participate um, and you can obviously see the demographics in terms of um, disability, gender um, and um, ethnic identity as well and again this is this is in the full report so there's a more detailed breakdown that that looks at th this these metrics against the sort of town uh, ward profile um, in terms of who actually who actually lives in this uh, area at the moment, um, and what we also did was we we tested those five design um, principles that we talked about earlier and asked people to um, rate whether they felt that the plans that they had seen responded uh, appropriately to uh, each of these design principles. And what what you can see is a, a sort of real balance in terms of. Uh, there was a strong recognition that the plans um, supported the design principle around offering transport choice in Enfield Town, um, but less so in terms of the vibrancy of the economy. So there were some concerns raised about the impact that some of the proposals might have on, on, on the economy in Enfield Town moving forwards. And um, again, there's a more detailed breakdown in the report itself, which I'd encourage you to read. But, you know, it gives you an interesting perspective on, on how residents felt um, those plans have responded to, to the design principles that they had helped to shape. Um, and then I've, ju I've just included a couple of graphs just to illustrate um, on the left hand side that sort of shows you um, the strength of feeling in terms of um, these proposals supporting the design principle that Enfield Town offers, offers transport choice. Um, you know, lots of people agreeing and strongly agreeing um, that, that, that this proposed plan does deliver on that. Um, and, then, and then on the right hand side, you know, cycling, cycling um, infrastructure and facilities can, can be quite a controversial topic. And uh, I think what we found when we tested a series of these different measures that were included in the plan was that I think on cycling infrastructure, there was definitely much more of a balance of, uh, of views as opposed to something like the, the 20, 20 mile per hour limit um, in Enfield Town that was, that was very broadly supported. Um, so just just to draw on some of the conclusions uh, quite quickly, you know, there's strong support for for some of the measures um, that we tested. Improving uh, the the Enfield Town station entrance was, was one, and, and the speed limit I've just talked about was another. And there was a, definitely a mixed response on on others, um, with cycling infrastructure being the key on that. There, there was a recognition that the scheme um, and the proposed plan does deliver on the de design principle around providing transport choices to uh, to visitors to Enfield Town. Um, however, there were concerns about uh, the economy and the impact that this might have on businesses and particularly around the loss of uh, on-street parking. Um, and that's something that, that we're doing some additional work on uh, at the moment. Um, and then in some of the conversations that we had, we had a really, really good discussion with the National Federation of the Blind UK. Um, and uh, there were a series of um, uh, sort of piece of feedback that were given around mobility issues and how we ensure that you know people with visual impairments for instance are able to travel around Enfield Town um, in a safe way um, when the changes are made and then in terms of the co-design process Tim's really going to elucidate on on this now so um, I don't want to preempt too much of his material but I think you know, the improvements to these four spaces were, were, were definitely welcome. Although, you know, Sad Sadler's Mill Square, for instance, is a new space that's being um, created by um, the closure of um, 
uh, closure of a road. So, you know, there was a little bit of, there were some people that weren't particularly supportive of that. So it's worth being, worth being upfront about that. But overall, everybody, everybody seemed to be supportive of more greening in Enfield town, celebrating the heritage was, was definitely something that came through quite strongly. I think with library green in the town park entrance, definitely a, a low key um, intervention that's focused on uh, connectivity uh, between Church Street and uh, the town park entrance was was the, the flavour that we got from the conversation that we had with Sadler's Sadler's Mill Square. It's definitely everybody's everybody who was at the co-design workshop saw that as a strong heritage uh, opportunity, um, and particularly you know there could be potential to include seating or there could be some something for families something for, for children to do in that space and then in terms of Enfield Town Station it's certainly about you know people felt that at the moment there's not really a sense of arrival when you when you come to Enfield Town and we have some really good ideas that I'm sure Tim will talk about um, about how to improve wayfinding how to celebrate the heritage there and um, you know Fountain Island which I, I think is a, is a fabulous space I think that the main thing that we got from the co-design process was that people felt we needed to make more of the fountain um, itself, improve the, the lighting and, and introduce more greenery um, into that space moving forwards. Um, so I, I'll finish there and hand over, hand over to Tim, but just to say, if you go to let's talk um, .enfield, um, Liz, you're gonna probably kill me because I'm gonna get the uh, website address. <laughs> Step in okay. with the website address. Uh, so it's let's talk forward slash enfield town. There we go. Um, if people go on there, you can you can uh, download the report, um, which which provides quite. A I think it's about fifty pages, so it's quite detailed. So um, uh, please please do um, do feel free to to read that. And um, Tim, I'm going to hand over to you. Thanks, thanks, Ollie. Brilliant. Um, yeah, it's great to be talking to you all. Um, I have left my camera going, but if my face disappears, it's because my internet's a bit glitchy. So, um, so okay. yeah, so yeah, so it's great to be talking to you. Um, I know Ollie said four spaces. Uh, that's what I'll be talking to you about today, really, is the four spaces. But um, if you want to jump to the next slide, please, Ollie. Well, I think there might be a delay. Hello. Yeah, we're here. We're here. We're just. Uh, uh, it's changed on my screen. All right, hasn't changed on mine. There is a slight delay, I think, by just okay, about fine. 10 seconds okay, or so. Cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I'll be talking through Station Plaza, Fountain Island, Sadler's Mill Square, as we're naming it at the moment, the purpose of this uh, at this stage, and Library Green. We're also looking at Market Square, um, however, separately with the, the Old Enfield Charitable Trust as landowners. Next slide. So, um, yeah, so Enfield Town, Station Plaza. Next slide. Uh, the vision for this space is a welcome arrival and it's a celebration of Enfield's culture and heritage, something drawn through from the co-design. Um, and um, I'm going to stop my video. Um, so, so the character here, so some precedents and some points of reference, uh, notably through kind of the co-design uh, more generally, people picked up on, the, on a reference to the remarkable kind of literature and poetry connections that Enfield Town has, uh, most notably Keats, uh, specifically here was mentioned. His prep school clerk's academy was um, originally on the footprint of the station. Um, other suggestions were kind of drawing in kind of an interesting and, and playful floorscape, including kind of words, patterns, symbols, introducing rain gardens here as well as, a, as part of a town-wide legibility tool, um, a general reduction of street clutter and, and comfort places to sit. Uh, and to wait, maybe wait for a onward travel or, or the arrival of, of a friend, I suppose. Uh, next slide. Um, the list here is kind of directly lifted from that co-design feedback, uh, key points from, from that feedback that were repeated by several people um, and importantly things that we were able to address through the design. I'll just lift out a couple there really that are important. So a celebration of the New River Loop, which is present on the opposite side of Southbury Road uh, through creating kind of tangible links in terms of planting and, and messaging and, and character. Um, there's a need to celebrate Enfield Town's culture, uh, heritage, through interpretation signage and by referencing through, through landscape design, um, improvements to the way people move around the space, uh, improving the pedestrian environment through kind of widening pavements um, and enhancing the, the landscape and, and environment through rain gardens and hard material detail. So um, next slide. So here's the existing plan um, as we have it at the moment. 
this kind of pick up and drop off that kind of cuts through the space, uh, a fairly kind of constrained area for, for pavement and, and generally kind of people are kind of squished, squished up there. Um, next slide. Um, and what our proposal kind of aims to do here is really kind of open up that space. We remove that pick up and drop off. Taxi rank will be uh, relocated nearby to the to the east. Um, and it creates kind of a, a much stronger visual connection with the town centre uh, and the crossing there on Southbury Road. Um, cycling is drawn around the outside but separated from traffic. Um, so we avoid the conflict between pedestrians and cyclists. And the, the space is kind of hugged by uh, by these like, kind of beautiful rain gardens with, with seating on the inside of that so people feel very protective and it, it protected and it's a nice place to, um, to spend some time and to dwell. Next slide. Um, yeah, and this kind of just picks up on those kind of key movement routes. So very much a strong kind of legible movement route through the town centre. Informal crossing points as well across Southbury Road to connect up to the, um, uh, up to the civic centre and kind of uh, around to the south as well as that's segregated cycle route. Um, here's a, an image I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, I think this is very telling. It really kind of comes across quite a chaotic environment, an awful lot of street clutter, um, a very confusing place to be, lots of kind of visual uh, uh, obstructions there. And I think, you know, we've got the surrounding like wonderful architecture, but your eyes very much not lifted to those things. Um, you're very much aware of kind of dodging traffic and making sure you um, you know, get to where you need to go without being run over, I suppose. Um, next slide. Um, and this is the view from the uh, as you emerge from from the train station. A very, very strong visual connection with the town centre. We also have kind of um, uh, the legible London signage there on, on that route. So it's a very, very legible place to be um, and a clear signage. Um, lots of planting there that hugs the space. The, um, the, the planting in the foreground, I think, ties quite nicely with the planting in, uh, in the sort of middle distance around the New River Loop. So you have a quite consistent green edge there. Um, and then there's that kind of welcome, welcome mat, that arrival mat sort of with, the, with the, the text in the pavement, which kind of um, sort of announces your arrival and gives you that kind of tangible connection with Enfield. Next slide. Um, and then there's also kind of an option here, some, something that was brought up through the co-design process, the actual facade of of Clark's Academy um, Keats School is in the basement of the VNA, and they're looking to offload some of their pieces uh, back to kind of where they belong in a way. So um, we're we're looking at an option where we might be able to reintroduce that kind of a meaningful piece of artwork. And then there's a, a, a shot here of, of um, extending the, the life of the space into the, into the evening. The lighting is something that's still being developed in terms of technical terms. So, but in terms of a concept, this is this is kind of the approach we're looking for. Um, a well-lit environment, very safe, very secure, um, and a very, very welcoming after dark. Um, on to Fountain Island next. Next slide, Ollie. Yeah, it's on its way, it's on its okay, way. Thanks. Technology, eh? Hopefully we'll be get we'll be able to get back to actual presentations at some point soon. Yeah, I can see it. That's yeah, no, I still can't. I'm on the introduction slide, Fountain Island still. I can see that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, again, we've got some um of those these points that are drawn from the focus groups and from the um uh, from the co-design, um. There's an additional need for, for, for seating, including kind of alfresco dining seating that's kind of flexible um, and, and, and free seating that integrates with, with the landscape, with the kind of landscape uh, design. Um, in, there was concern though, however, that some of these seatings could uh, potentially give rise to antisocial behaviour, so it's how we might address that. Um, include planting and create a sense of enclosure and protection. Um, there were suggestions for, for planters, flower beds, kind of additional trees, um, Bee friendly planting, but that's really kind of hug to hug the space and offer that kind of protection. Um, next slide. Okay, thanks. So the, the, the vision here is kind of the, the People's Plaza as kind of a more a quite central place for, for the community of Enfield, um, a social space for, for everybody. Um, the precedents here suggest kind of a, a clearly flexible space with high quality finish that's accessible and, and usable. 
Um, notably, the opportunities for spill out space, not fresco dining, which is very critical and is with the future success of, of pubs and restaurants in a post COVID world. Um, comfortable seating, protect, protected from vehicular space. Um, and reinforcing those special features within the space, for example, the, the fountain, which sits in the centre of Fountain Island. Next slide. Um, yep, just an existing ex existing plan here. So um, busy, uh, busy, wide, wide carriageway there. Um, not very much containment. Um, kind of uses that are introduced into the space at the moment. Because there's the fun fair there is kind of a little bit ad hoc. It's not got a lot of structure. Um, and kind of the, the movement throughout the space is kind of quite chaotic really. And there's not a lot of places to sit and, and dwell and spend time. Next slide. Thanks. So our, our proposal kind of is focused very much on the idea of, uh, of flow and pedestrian movement. And it also has uh, quite a strong synergy with the approach that we're using at, um, at uh, Station Plaza. Indeed, I, sh I should probably say as well that all spaces um, we were looking at to, to reinforce the idea of a family of spaces so um, all these different uh, parts of the town kind of hold together in a coordinated and cohesive cohesive approach so we have um yeah clear movement throughout throughout, throughout the space we use potentially movable seating to maximize flexibility of this space um, so the idea is to have modular modular seats that are sufficiently weighted so they have to be moved by events teams but they have an, an everyday mode but then a have ultimate flexibility to allow for lots of different positions. Um, and then the space is kind of quite clear and open to allow for um, a lot of different events um, or purpose uh, uses to take place. Next slide. Um, yeah, so this is that clear kind of movement and routes through the space. So there's all, we, we maintain clear access space and a very clear connection, um, kind of a linchpin, I suppose, in the town between uh, the town station and kind of the, the rest of the town's market square and the town centre beyond. Um, I think this is quite a powerful image, really. I think what, <coughs> what this does is it kind of shows that there's um, it's a very hostile environment. You're, you're not very much, not very well protected from the um, from, from the traffic. And uh, in public spaces like this, you know, where, where space is at an absolute premium, it, it's really not working very hard at all. Um, and this very much feels like a space to move through rather than spend time. It effectively feels just like a very wide piece of pavement. Next slide. Um, and what our proposal does there is we kind of enclose the space with, with the beautiful rain garden planting, which um, stitches through all the different spaces. So all the spaces have a similar character of, of planting. This captures rainwater in kind of a sustainable, sustainable way, uh, water runoff from, from the carriageway there. Um, we supply, supply new seating. Um, so lots of places for people to sit and to dwell and spend time. But really this focus space is focused very much on the fountain um, as kind of that centrepiece, as given that sort of pride of place really, uh, and making sure we've got those, those clear movement routes through. Next slide. Um, just kind of demonstrate here, so you can see those kind of modular seats going from in the last slide was in, a, in kind of an everyday mode to being then scattered into kind of a, to promote a, a highly social environment. So lots of different opportunities for how those seats could be repositioned and then to allow for greater flexibility and functionality of the of the space. And Sadler's Mill Square, which the name is kind of still up for debate really, but um, yeah, so this is a, a, a section of Little Park Gardens which has been closed off, so a, a completely new, completely new space. Um, next slide, so yeah, uh, one suggestion kind of was that was that the naming of this place should be opened up to the the public and I think that presents a great opportunity really. Um, it was noted that there's, uh, there is a valued beautiful kind of mature lime tree which is a defining feature of the space which offers, offers kind of continuity and connectivity with the leafy neighbourhoods to the north, those kind of wonderful like leafy areas. Um, uh, and here the design, uh, as the design progresses the mature tree needs to be kind of protected um, as the roots are kind of quite close to the surface so shallow dig um, root protection solutions will be, will be required. Um, we're also asked to you know, explore the opportunities to kind of repurpose those those wonderful listed telephone boxes um, so they can be retained as kind of special features but maybe utilised in, in kind of alternate alternate ways. Um, the design again should explore those kind of sustainable urban drainage solutions and create a great place for people to stop and to um, have that kind of welcome break from, from the busy, busy church street. Um, next slide. 
so yeah so the, the vision is kind of saddler's mill square reimagining a hidden stream there is a there is saddler's mill runs in a culvert below below the space but it's not really referenced so we were thinking of kind of um uh, revealing that through some some sort of artwork or um some sort of interpretation it's sort of four meters dirt deep in a narrow culvert so we did look at ways to open it up but um it seems that it's that that would be kind of quite difficult um and it's that as i mentioned that welcome interlude from the busy high street um here kind of the suggestion was to create kind of that welcome break as i mentioned um an interlude from that busyness um provide something kind of informally playable perhaps uh, a place to meet uh, and greet people um with a really strong uh, green identity i think here with an opportunity there's an opportunity to really put that put that rain garden kind of uh, uh, character and kind of really put that on steroids and make that a really strong feature of the space next slide so yeah as uh, as it is today it it doesn't really have a role or, or function or, or identity it's it's effectively um a, a cut through for, for vehicular traffic and um yeah and just widish widish pavements there with those listed telephone kiosks on the, on the side but as i said doesn't really have a role of identity next slide yeah so um <clears throat> the, the plan is effectively to have uh, some some substantial or decent sized areas are, of planting here um and surround that with seating uh, so where people have sat behind them there's there's there's, there's plantings so they feel safe and secure um and uh, they have views out over the space it creates quite a nice gathering gathering spot there i think as well um those listed telephone kiosks which have been kind of slightly redistributed to, to maximize their functionality i suppose they they also may have some uh, opportunities to have some, some cafe spill out that are associated uh, with them. Potentially have some playful features that run through the planting areas, and then um, uh, some interpretation or artwork which runs through the space, which kind of describes the presence of that of that culverted river, uh, that culverted stream below. Could also have kind of that 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 literary connection, that poetry connection as well. That's a really exciting little space here. And then also we have um, uh, in, it kind of informal um cycle connection that stitches with those kind of neighborhoods to the, to the north next slide um it's a space which has been designed very much with with pedestrian movement in mind so lots of opportunities for cross movement um kind of this kind of forming that orientation space if you will as you enter from from the north um so you arrive at, at saddler's mill square and you can easily get to all the different directions different routes you want to get to Um, here's the image as we have it today and kind of as I, as I touched on before I think it's very much lacking in kind of any sort of identity or role or, or purpose here um, and, our, and our future aspiration for the space is to really kind of as I mentioned kind of maximize that green space lots of uh, lots of planting opportunities um, really kind of a, a generous seating offer as well um, the um, seats kind of designed to, to capture lots of people and to, to maximize the opportunity for social interaction those telephone kiosks there as well in the background kind of um repurposed um, for other uses and then again as with all the spaces really important to extend the life of these spaces into the evening to make them feel safe and secure after dark um maximizing that kind of um uh, the the views in and the views out um and the, and the um and the security of the space in that in that way um finally uh, library green and, and the town park entrance um so overwhelmingly the um the feeling was that this space is kind of well loved um and understandably so uh, and therefore it's more about making a, a good place great rather than kind of big you know wholesale changes um a few of the points were um a key point was to form a new powerful connection between Church Street through Library Green to Town Park, uh, kind of to stitch these into the, the wider movement framework. Um, there's a desire to enhance the flexible nature of the space as well, um, to accommodate more events, um, even artisan or seasonal markets. Um, but as a footnote, shouldn't really compete with the market square. Um, um, and the other desire for this space to be more kind of intensively used, I suppose, and extend that life of the space through into the evening um we're, we're asked to look at better crossings to surround to surrounding roads an increase uh to the space for cafe spillout 
and more space for tables and, and chairs. Next slide. Um, the vision here, so with um, with Fountain Island, we had this People's Plaza. This is very much the People's Garden, and the idea is a green oasis in the heart of Enfield for, for the community of Enfield. Um, so um, with some of the character here is to, you know, sensitively integrate or, or segregate even kind of a leisure cycle access. Um, <clears throat> opportunities to affect flexible uses, community events, uh, performances, those kind of more passive things, I think. Um, more powerful gateways, uh, clear direct access to improve legibility, and beautiful places to sit and relax, nestled in biodiverse and varied um, native and non-native planting. Next slide. Um, here we have, uh, as we have it uh, today, there's kind of this, uh, there's a the chip that is surrounded very much, surrounded by, by road infrastructure, and it kind of feels enclosed uh, and separated uh, quite a lot here. Um, there's narrow walkways. Um, it, it doesn't really advertise itself as a, a or promote, promote itself rather as kind of one of these kind of key welcoming spaces. And there's notably there's a disconnect between the town park uh, entrance. Next slide. Um, so uh, the key moves here, I suppose, are that much stronger connection through uh, from Church Street through to town park entrance. Um, and much stronger gateways um, and access points into into the space. Um, we kind of we reinforce those kind of uh, the the planted edge to kind of hug the space more. Um, but we kind of look at the planting again in a bit more detail. Um, so it's more biodiverse. Um, there's notably there's a, a kind of that leisure um, cycle access to the west there, uh, which kind of steps inside uh, from Cecil Road. So um, almost the idea really is that the um, the, the space extends out to Cecil Road <coughs> further, and that to, to draw that cycleway inside, much much more direct routes, um, clearer clearer functionality, uh, much more flexibility. And this is kind of why just what I just mentioned really in terms of the um, the connectivity and the, and the and the routes throughout. You can see there that cycle route that cuts inside. Um, and yeah, the very strong connection between Town Park and the and Church Street. Um, here's a, an image as we have it today, as I, as I mentioned, surrounded by that very dense planting, which often hides a lot of library green, really. And um, you know, this has safety implications. But that planting, although quite quite mature, a lot of it is kind of very monoculture. So in terms of in biodiversity terms, it, it's it's not it's not particularly strong. Um, that that fantastic um, uh, library building there is, is is kind of concealed and hidden, and there's very narrow footpaths and walkways that are kind of indeterminate in terms of where you're where you're going to or how you're being connected with other places. Next slide. Um, so what what we do here is we we reintroduce that kind of very biodiverse edge, um, successional planting throughout the year, lots of colour, um, native and non-native species. Um, a clear direct route then from here through to the town park entrance. So the two spaces are very much connected. Um, we uh, we look at reinforcing some of the areas of, of lawn. Um, so these can accommodate um, the uh, potential market stalls or other performance or those sorts of activities. Um, so the, 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 long, the space has kind of got some uh, protection from, from damage. Next slide. Oh yeah, and that's this is kind of case in point. So we have the uh, a potential artisan market, for example, uh, within the space, um, and that would go on those kind of platforms. Lots of lots of more seating. Again, a much more generous seating offer, and opportunities to extend the the, spe the life of the space into the into the evening. Um, I think the, the the key thing here is 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 better infrastructure for the space. So pop up power, uh, potential Wi-Fi points. Uh, those sorts of things to enable those sort of activities to take place. And I think we've got a couple more slides. Um, here is a view out to the um, out to the out to the west of of the of the space. Again, a very kind of indeterminate kind of uh, vista here. There's there's no there's no way through to town park, which is beyond those trees at the end there. That kind of monoculture of a, of an edge um, disconnect between uh, Cecil Road and and the, the the library green. 
Um, so our proposal here, so we, we draw the space right out to the edge of Cecil Road and we bring in a, um, uh, a cycleway, which would have been um, footway before, and then draw the footway inside that, uh, which connects straight through to, to Town Park. Beautiful sweeping paths that connect through to the library building and potentially through to the Palace Exchange, future developments, uh, whenever that may be, but making sure that we have opportunities to connect with the future movement network of the town. Uh, to the left there, there's a cycle storage um, to allow people who are, you know, they, they, they might not want to ride all the way into town, they might want to park on the outside and walk in and then come back and retrieve their cycle bikes afterwards. Very much the same thing that happens at the moment outside the, uh, the station. Um, that, that, that option is available there, but much more seating, um, better connectivity. And I think that's, that's all the slides. So um, yeah, thanks for listening to me. I look forward to taking any questions after, after Richard. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Tim. I'll hand over then to uh, Richard, if he's there. You there, Richard? Um, I am. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ollie. So this is just the final slide um, where I just wanted to give you really an indication of, of next steps and a, and a bit of a, a context of the, of the time frame. Um, so starting on the left then um, this summer, so there's a few things that are happening throughout the summer. Um, so one thing I wanted to mention was some of you may have seen over the last couple of days, in fact, um, that some um, temporary measures have started to be rolled out um, on Fountain Island. So that's, um, we're working with our, our colleagues in, in economic development and, and this is part of the council's sort of uh, response to, you know, encouraging people back to the high street and, and particularly uh, enabling more outdoor trading and more outdoor eating and drinking to take place. So, so what we've done uh, recently is, is put out these, uh, these temporary planters and then what will be happening shortly is um, some seating areas, uh, some pop-up seating areas will be happening within that, uh, within that space um, with local businesses, you know, increasing the space that they've got outside to, to serve customers. Um, and so hopefully that's a, that's, um, that's a really positive thing. Um, um, for for the town centre in general, and, and you know, it's great that we're supporting local businesses in that way, and hopefully this will you know encourage uh, more, more people back into the town centre. Um, and of course, what that will do is, is um, you know, as, as a as a sort of pilot scheme, almost if you like, enable us to sort of look at that, understand how that's working, what is working, what's maybe not working so well, and these type of of temporary um, trial interventions can re really help inform uh, the longer term longer term plans um, so that's happening we've also got and I think uh, sort of briefly mentioned earlier um, some ongoing um, loading um, engagement that's happening with businesses and residents who live within the immediate town centre um, so um, so we, we've written to all those those businesses and those and those residents um, and provided some details of, of of how as part of the wider plans and we're really focusing today on the places on the spaces but um but later on we're also sort of developing the highway plans um just trying to work out and make sure that that residents of businesses understand what we're proposing uh, listening to any issues and, and feedback on those particular plans so that that work can continue to involve so it's it's a, a early engagement around that and in addition to um the letters and the information that's gone out we've got colleagues uh, who are going out door to door um, speaking with those businesses, showing those plans, um, and making sure that, um, that they understand what's being proposed and, and can feedback um, accordingly. So that that's going to be happening. I mean, that's sort of happening now, actually, but I think we'll continue over the next uh, week or two. And that informs that process of of the ongoing highways element design of the project. So this is a this is a combined sort of coherent project of of looking at the highway network and 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 the movement and the traffic flow. Um, as well as looking at the public realm and how those areas can be improved and that's obviously what we've been focusing on this evening. So, so that's the immediate sort of activity around, uh, around the next steps. Looking slightly further forward then, so looking in, into the autumn, of the winter, uh, autumn to winter, um, there's some other areas of design that need to, to continue. Um, so I think Tim mentioned uh, the market trust. So we do feel that, um, that the you know, the market square is obviously such a you know key and important part of the town centre so that's something that we want to continue working with those landowners on on how that's integrated into the plans we also need to do i think more work on on legible sort of um wayfinding 
Um, and just just while I mention it, it's not on the slide, but um, some of the things as well that we need to do potentially as part of that is is continue to look at um, the historical references that that, that that we're making and and the type of things that we're going to draw out in the design. Um, so there's still lots more detailed design work to happen. And I think we've recently agreed um, we have an Enfield Town consultative group, which is a, a number of community. Uh, groups are represented on that and, and one of the things that we've recently agreed from that is that we'd set up a, a sort of subgroup looking at uh, the history of Enfield Town we've already done quite a lot of work on that but how that history might be able to um, influence some of some of the some of the detail of the design that we're talking about so a um, bit of a side note but if anybody's interested in that then um, then do let us know and you can potentially sort of participate in that in that group but other things as well to you know, lots of detail to be sort of understood around around lighting. Um, you know, it can be a very powerful thing, and we need to get that right, and that 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 will involve sort of specialists, along with, for example, the, the you know the the placement of CCTV. Um, so working sort of internally with colleagues, you know, at the council and, and external specialists again on on how we can make sure that the town centre um, is a safe place to be. So th those type of themes going to be be um, happening throughout the year. Uh, with a view to looking to deliver some community uh, presentations um, on on the combined plan um, later on um, in the winter so so that's where everyone can get a real sense of how the public spaces um, are working with uh, with the highway network um, elements as well and, and a bit more detail on some of those items that I've I've covered above so that's the sort of activity for this year just to give people a sense of the horizon so um this as i said there's still lots of lots of work to do um in 2022 so we'll be looking at moving into as we think that we've got um starting to settle on on some designs and some plans we can get into that that detailed design uh work that that needs to happen that enables you to move forward um you know with some of the more technical elements um but also would be looking to to conduct uh, the sort of formal consultation for this project. So this project's been running for quite a while. We're um, expending a lot of time and energy, and rightly so, in in a whole series of early engagement that you've already heard about and are seeing the outputs of, and that we're reporting back on now. That's really crucial for such a big project and and for an area that's that's got so much interest. Um, and it's all building up to to the formal statutory consultation, the bit that we that we have to do um, where everybody will be able to see the plans and make and make their final representations so um, so that that will um, be towards the end of 2022 and then some stage um, you know subject to that consultation and and funding and and you know and a series of other issues um, then um, you know we'd look to be implementing the project um, sometime in in 2023 so hopefully that just gives you a bit of a flavour of the things that are happening in the, in the short term, the medium term, um, and the slightly longer term. And I certainly, certainly welcome any questions on that as we get into the Q&A. I will say that throughout, over this period, and uh, as we put on the bottom there, if, if we find opportunities such as, um, you know, the Fountain Island um, interventions that I've mentioned, um, there could be a range of other things. If there's things that we can experiment and try along the way to help inform that longer term design, then we will absolutely do that. And I think that's that you know that's a positive thing to do. Um, and so um, you know, so 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 don't be surprised if uh, if something else sort of um, you know happens along the way. But we'll certainly be looking to um, to to let people know about that as we go along. Um, I think Ollie, that um, that's Thank about you. all I've got to say on that. Lovely, thanks, Richard. And I can see that there's a, a few bits of chat and um, some questions uh, that have come up. So I'm just going to get straight into it. I will uh, stop sharing my screen, but I can always bring the presentation back up if required. I'll probably take them in any order. And people, please feel free to put your hands up as well if you would like to come on stage and ask a question. Uh, that option is available. So I'll ask the first one that came through, which was from Carol. Um, how do you propose to minimise antisocial behaviour in the seating areas, especially late at night? Uh, I have to use little park gardens to walk home late at night and those seats uh, scream scary to me. So I think um, Richard and, and Tim maybe talk about your experience elsewhere, but you know, Richard, uh, over to you on that one. Well, I, I, I could jump in actually on that. Yeah, yeah, go for it Tim. Yeah, yeah please. sure. Um, I think 
we, we look quite carefully at kind of the secure by design principles. So a lot of it's to do with creating, I'm going to turn the video back on again, see if it works all right. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's about creating kind of spaces that people feel safe to be in, um, that are well lit, that we make sure we maintain clear views throughout. Um, so people can see you approaching and you can see them when they're, when they're sat there. Uh, we also look at the actual design of seating. So it kind of tries to limit the amount of people could, can lie down um, on the seats and things like that. Um, it's, a, it's quite a difficult balance to have, but I think the, we always find that spaces that attract more people to are often safer. So it's about making sure that it's an attractive place for lots of people to be in, um, rather than just kind of the odd one or two here or there. Or we kind of get rid of dark corners, secluded spaces. Um, so yeah, I take on board the comment completely, um, but I think it's something we we just we're just mindful as we progress through the design. And I think I'll just uh, just Carol, Carol just followed up and says secure by design for, uh, implies overlooked. Little park gardens is not not overlooked. Is there any consideration about about that in terms of well, the, the view, view, views in and through? Um, Secure by design could be people passing, could be um, yeah how people feel within the space, um, how people feel passing through the space. It's not just purely about things that are people looking over a space. Okay, think, great. You know, just to add, you know, the CCT CCTV work. Um, you know, we need to look at <coughs> what is, what is the CCTV coverage across the town centre. Uh, you know, how can that be developed as part of the project? um you know so that that so that, that plays a role as well but it's good it's good it's good it's good, it's good points so we want to create these these um these the, the we want the whole town center to feel comfortable at all times of day and night so it's something that we've got to get right more work right. to do okay um i'll ask the next question that, that came in uh, can you share any current thinking or ideas you have for improving and supporting uh, the market square i know um tim you alluded to it in your presentation richard you did as well Please feel free, one of you, to to come in and um, and, and talk to that. Yeah, I think we're th those conversations are ongoing with the trusts, and so I think it, you know it, it's it's right that we need to develop those, um, you know, with them as the landowners, uh, you know, first before we're in a position to you know to share that to share that thinking. But I think there's a um, you know there's definitely a, a a a shared sense that 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 historic space is a really key part of the town centre, and that we want to. You know really see that, that you know that that feature as a place but um i think at this stage um you know I, 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 until we've worked through that a little bit more with the trust i don't think there's much more to say yeah okay fair enough um i'm going to ask a question that's been asked by a couple of people in in different forms um around the concrete planters that, that were installed on monday richard i know it's not technically within the scope necessarily of this but it but it's been asked by a couple of people so i think probably summed up by Sue's comment, which is it's a shame that the temporary plants on Fountain Island don't reflect the, the design standards we're discussing for the future. Concrete isn't a, a sympathetic material. Um, and then and then linked to that, uh, Lindsay has asked, um, now you've explained that these are temporary, who is paying for them? Are they bought or rented and what happens to them after their removal? Um, so probably take that in terms of, is that the sort of, that temporary planter, Richard, that's not really the design aesthetic that, that will govern this project moving forward, will it? No, I think I think when you're trying things out, um, and I think it's absolutely right to try things out, and and um, you know you'll the type of materials that you use are going to be different to to what you might do in a, in, a, in a permanent scheme. Um, so as I've said, the, those those measures are part of our our plan for for reopening our town centres and encouraging people back so there's also an element of you know once the decision's made that we want to activate that space more and allow more seating and licensing you know there's a question around well what assets can you get in um, at the right speed um, and get them in place so, so that you can enable that key function now different people will have a, a, a view on the on the aesthetics um, really what we're trying to do is you know and it, and it's not finished yet because you know i think what we need to do is get a sense of the space when um when there's lots of people hopefully if that's the case sat in that area you know eating drinking uh, enjoying themselves and, and and socializing and the sort of 
creating that sort of sense of greenery and protection around the space is, is all part of sort of creating that ambience but that doesn't mean to say that it's reflective of the type of quality of material that we'd want to use um you know in, in the final in the final scheme um i don't know whether our colleagues anybody wants to add anything to that no okay um i, I think there's been it there's also a bit linked to the planter uh, um on, on found side there's uh, one resident said that they're too close together and, and currently uh, near a pedestrian crossing and, and in actually obstructing pedestrians and causing an issue for uh, people with disabilities and, and pair, parents with double buggies, for instance. Is that something that, that could potentially be looked into? Yeah, I mean, we've looked carefully at the, at the placement and the spacing to make sure that, that, that movement you know, is, you know, that there's good, good pedestrian flow and that it is, it is accessible. But again, that's, that's one of the, the sort of the ideas behind these temporary experiments is that we can come along and, 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 you know, push one of those left to the right or, you know, so you, there's changes that you can make. You're not, you're not implementing something on a permanent basis. So this is, this is not about necessarily doing something that everybody likes and thinks is delightful, but it's about trying something um, making some changes and, and enabling hopefully us to be able to activate that space more. If there's things that we need to change as part of that, then then it's 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 sort of relatively easy to do so if we think that's the right thing to do in in the, in the current approach that we're taking. Okay, and Liz, there's quite a few a few sort of contributions coming in um, on the chat. Can I just make sure that we pick pick all of those up because I'm I'm going to I'm going to ask the questions that are being asked as opposed to. Just putting people's contributions to you but there will be we will follow up after this with with responses yeah absolutely issues, yeah. Yeah. yeah and and people can always email us as well at healthy streets at enfield.gov.uk um but we'll we'll be taking this chat on um as comments as well great okay and any any question that's not covered in the next half an hour or so we'll we'll pick up afterwards as well yeah yeah Brilliant. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring uh, a couple of people on to talk now because we've got a couple of hands up. So the first is Robert. Robert, I've brought, I've brought you on. If you unmute yourself, you can uh, ask your question. Uh, my question, I've got three questions concerning Sadler's Mill Square. Yeah. First, it, it is, there are two schools behind there, Enfield Grammar and Enfield County. Uh, that uh, road, Little Park Gardens, is access to both of them one way or t'other. So, um, what, uh, and particularly for uh, the emergency services, if that's closed, it has an implication on the rest of the roads all around the back there. Um, and I made this point when we had the consultation and it seems to have been ignored. So, and also, um, the worst elevation on that development is the nationwide. You haven't shown that, you haven't said what is contemplated that for that uh, at all. And uh, it seems to me a serious omission. Was there, was there another question, Robert? You said three. Yeah, well, the other, question, uh, the, other, the other question uh, that I think um, is, is very relevant concerns the library green, and that is um, they're talking about um, perhaps having, having uh, markets there. Uh, my understanding is that the Enfield market is uh, granted by a royal charter and that there can be no other markets within one mile of the market, Enfield market. As far as I know, the Royal Charter has not been altered. Okay, thank you, uh, Robert. Appreciate um, your contribution. Um, would you like to dive in first, um, Richard, potentially on, on Sadler's Mill Square? <laughs> yes, um, I might just need some clarification on the nationwide one because I. But but in in terms of in terms of the schools, we you know we're clearly well aware that uh, of where the schools are located, and we've been speaking with the schools. Um, what the proposals do and we have sort of shown some early thoughts previously we haven't focused on that tonight but we've shown how you know the the sort of road network would need to be reconfigured slightly uh, to an, uh, allow access into the schools not not through that existing turning um, but round um, the other end of Little Park Gardens and and how there'd be some sort of change to the one-way system to facilitate access to the schools and um, and access of course to the car park there we've discussed uh, that closure with emergency services who who are, are not concerned by that so that that's um, not an issue um, as far as we're concerned at this time so I think that 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 from so, so, so it's not the fact that we've that we've not listened 
Um, we, we've heard that there might be some people have different views on whether that's a good thing to do or not, and, and, and they're all valid views. Um, but when we do bring proposals forward, and, it, and they may be sort of contrary to what somebody else has suggested, it's not, it's not necessarily the case that we haven't listened. It, we, we've, we've considered things um, and we continue to, to develop the project. And sometimes once we've spoken with the schools and we've spoken with the emergency services, you know, it might just be the, something that we continue to propose, um, which is the case um, in this instance. Um, in terms of the trust and the Royal Charter, yeah, that, you know, that's um, that's a discussion that, that we have with, with with the market trust. Um, you know, there there is precedent of of some um, you know pop up markets, um, you know, that we've had before on on Fountain Island, in fact, and and so you know that's something. Um, so that that's all part of that discussion. I think you know we want to explore that opportunity sort of for for more pop up markets. They don't. It doesn't have to be that they have to be on Fountain Island because that's where they've always been, of course. Um, and the focus for that space, as I've as I've set out uh, previously, um, for the moment, is to activate that space to add our additional outdoor seating. And that's something that we want to see. Um, you know, hopefully every day of the week. Um, and so that space is better sort of focused on for that purpose at the moment um, rather than um, you know occasional pop-up markets and, and where else in the town centre can we can facilitate that activity when you know when, when the current conditions um, are sort of supportive of that type of thing. In terms of nationwide um, um, so if there's if there'll be Robert do you want to help me with I wasn't I didn't quite catch that bit apologies do you want to just help me with that bit? When you, if you, if you stand with with your back to um, Church Street, looking up Little Park Gardens, on your left is the Nationwide, the facade yep. of the Nationwide. It's actually a corner site, but if you, if you're sitting uh, uh, in that area, the worst aspect of that is that facade, and you haven't. Sh and, uh, and and this was something again I pointed out during consultation. Uh, it, it, it's 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 very bland uh, and and it's quite out of keeping with the, uh, the, the with the um, general architecture of 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 of, of that that space. Uh, right. But it has not been it's not been addressed. You didn't show any visuals of that, um, and it would appear to have been um, ignored. Okay, I I, so I understand now. I, I don't know whether Tim whether. Is. What, what I would say is I, com I completely agree with you in terms of its kind of attractiveness um, as a facade and we did register that and we were kind of looking at the space and doing our kind of our very detailed site analysis which would be here for hours I think if we went through all the analysis but um, at the space kind of orientated so seating is facing inward and away and looking at the more attractive aspects of that space. The, the, the area outside the, the building you're talking about is mainly focused on movement and connectivity uh, we don't have any control over the actual facade that's outside of our scope. Um, so we did, we did look at the orientation of seating and the orientation of space, draw focus away from that because we don't have control over it. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, Thanks, uh, Richard. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of questions that are sort of, sort of linked around how, how this is all going to be financed and how the maintenance is going to be financed. Richard, do you just want to talk to... Um, the funding of this particular project and you know people have said there's been a question asked is is this going to be fun, funded by agreeing to Deutsche Bank's massive development plan for instance so if you want to just talk talk to the funding arrangement for this. Sure yeah um, so I think as I may have alluded to in, in my next step slides that there's there is a sort of clearly a funding aspect to this so for those who may not be uh, familiar um, we've been working on this as, as being a sort of nine million pound um, program um, so that comes from a, a six million pound grant from um, from the mayor of London in terms of the livable neighborhood program uh, so that's the bulk of it um, the other sum is, is some of the transport money that's 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 aligned um, uh, some council capital uh, investment that's been approved and then around about half a million pounds that would come from from developers so that that those developments would include um, things like uh, any any potential future uh, development from the um, from the shopping centre. So um, the six million pounds, which is the the bulk of the money. Um, so the the project's been successful in its bid, but as I've explained before, that doesn't mean to say, unfortunately, that um, that. 
we have a check that's written to us for that money and that money sits in our bank account. So what happens is um, the project has to go through a series of gateways um, with, the, with the funders where you have to uh, demonstrate that you've, you've gone through you know, the right level of process and, uh, and detail um, in the development of the designs and, and, and you know, engaging with the community uh, and making sure that those plans are, are workable. And as you go through uh, each gateway, um, you get release a little bit more money to continue the, the, the progression of the plan. So, you know, we need to be realistic that this plan was approved uh, prior, prior to the pandemic. Um, however, last year during the pandemic, we successfully secured uh, the money that we needed um, to get through uh, the next gateway, um, which, which we sort of just gone through. Um, and we're just having discussions now uh, with the funders about the release of some more money this year um, to enable us to, to continue to progress this, this project. Um, so I'm optimistic, but, but there's not a guarantee of, of funding, but we've, we've continued to progress this project through the pandemic. Um, some, some projects um, in other parts of London have, have not progressed in the same way. Uh, and therefore, I think we're in a good, a good position to, to continue to see that investment uh, continue to flow. Thanks, Richard. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, ask a question from Judith next, and then uh, Linda, who's got her hand up, I will bring onto the stage as well. So the first question, and this is something that I, I witnessed actually last week when I was in Enfield Town. That can anything be done to ensure that Sadler's Mill Square remains scooter free at the area leading to Marcus uh, Italian Restaurant? I think that might be Burley Way rather than um, Little Park Little Park Gardens, um, Sadler's Mill Square. Um, because it's been taken over and it's not a good area to be in now. Um, is there anything that any action that could be taken within the scope of this project on that? Yeah, I think we need to. So, so we've got um, we have got a proposal, I think, as part of this plan to install a motorcycle bay um, to the at, the at the bottom of Church Street. I don't think there's necessarily a provision for them um, at the moment. Um, so we hope that we can better manage that. I mean, I think this it's an interesting thing. Certainly, you know, they have always been present, but, um, um, but you know, obviously, again, uh, as a result of the pandemic, you know, I think there's been a sort of explosion in that sort of, you know, that takeaway thing. So we, it's a, th a thing that we need to make sure that we're managing for the project. So I think we maybe need to, um, you know, continue to look at that. Um, I think um, uh, I've seen some correspondence and someone, colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, but I just sort of glanced through the, uh, so in our in our joint inbox about um a, a business that's opened the new restaurant up there who was very uh very supportive i think of the plans um but also had some concerns about how we were managing sort of motor vehicle movement in that area because i think you know i think they're doing some outdoor seating there as well um so um yes yeah, something to uh, to look at uh, but it is definitely something that we're thinking carefully about Certainly, certainly, the Marcus uh, Marcus restaurant had uh, lots of lots of outdoor seating when I when I was up there the other day. It looked fabulous. So um, yeah, well, it was a response. Um, it was a response to the to the letter. I think the business engagement that you've been doing. Yeah, excellent. Okay, um, uh, sort of linked to that. Then uh, Lin uh, Linda's hand has gone down by the looks of things. So um, uh, uh, Linda, feel free to put put your hand back up if you so wish, um, and I'll, I will bring you on. But no worries if not. Um, I've got a, a question from Lindsay, which is: Can you confirm that the current parking consultation is just that—a consultation rather than a foregone con uh, foregone decision? Um, yes, I, I mean, I, th I think it's even you know, it, it's it's just it's just engagement. I mean, it's you know, so, uh, you know, it's what we call engagement before we get to the consultation. Um, you know, so um, and and so even when we get to the consultation, what we what we're presenting, you know, won't be, um, you know, a done deal if you like, because it's then it's then got to go through that that process of consultation and that and that that process of reporting and scrutiny. So we're a long way from, um, you know, from well, in terms of the plan and the next steps, that that's the sort of statutory consultation that we'd um, expect to see, um, you know, next next year. Um, so yes, it's, it, it, that that engagement process is helping inform whether we need to, you know, let's listen to some feedback on what we're proposing there. We we appreciate that, that there's some you know some reasonable changes as part of those proposals. You know, is there some things that we've not thought of uh, and some implications that that we need to consider, uh, and and that's why we want to hear from people. Okay, thank you very much. Um, then I'm going to ask uh, a question. Where did I find it? Sorry. Um, 
any thoughts on uh, um, this might be outside of the scope but it's just worth commenting on because uh, uh, it has been asked by a resident any any thoughts on uh, the old magistrates court Enfield Chase Cenotaph that's just a general question put out there so are there any plans for that particular area for, for those buildings anything that you can elucidate on Richard um, it it sort of it sits I mean it's been thought of as, as sort of the wider town centre work along with um, you know the old magistrates court in, in terms of it sits outside of our core work area for the you know for improvements for this for this project but we are thinking about how we've got that coherent link um, you know up to Enfield Chase station but there's no no specific proposals that we're making as part of the the, the livable neighbourhood program for, for those areas. Thank you. Um, is there anything another question in from Carol is there anything uh, proposed to help uh, improve shop fronts uh, generally again it might might slightly fall out of the scope of the, the, this particular piece of work but um, so again sorry Richard these are all falling on you but um, probably one for you to comment on just quickly if you can. Yeah, I mean, it's not something that we can use. This uh, this funding is is not something that we can use to invest in 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 private property uh, shop fronts. But we have heard this from a number of places, and and um, it's something that that we're looking into whether there's some other funding that we can access uh, to help with that. So so we recognise the issues raised. It's it's very valid, uh, and my my colleague Agar is is nodding, but we don't know where where that that might go but we're we're absolutely working on trying to get some some money for some initiatives along those lines brilliant and the um the the, the palace gardens um uh, proposals have, have, have been raised on, on a couple of occasions uh, again I, I know it's outside the scope of the, of the project but but it's been asked so i, I will ask it it's uh, this is from arthur how, how do you see the impact of the the palace gardens proposals working with uh, with this particular scheme and are you talking to the developers so, so we're, um, you know, through our uh, colleagues in planning, we're making sure that, um, you know, that there's a coherent conversation going on there. So what, what we do need to know is, and obviously there's not a, bit, a planning application has not come forward yet, um, um, but, the, you know, there, there are, you know, inevitably a number of discussions, be, you know, before that might happen. So the key thing for us is to is that, that there is that dialogue. We've had some discussions with the developers as well about, um, you know, and, and I think it's a bit early yet, but as things progress or, or if things progress or whenever any development does come forward, and I genuinely don't know what the, uh, the position might be on that, um, that there's coherence between the look and feel of the public realm, for example, that that, you know, that, that all, all sort of joins up. And that crucially for us, I think it's important that depending on what any development like there might look like, you know, where are new entrances, you know, what, what is the you know, could that change the sort of pedestrian flow in and out through the town centre? So, for example, the, the proposals that I have seen that the developer themselves put out for some sort of engagement, um, you know, last year and other people have seen was 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 activating Cecil Road much more and, and identified some some sort of new pedestrian flow routes, you know, th through that development. And what we'll need to be doing if if they were to happen as this development as part of another is make sure that where um, involved in that discussion and making sure that we our plans evolve to make sure pedestrian crossing points for example are you know are lined up in you know in the right places so it's you know the the these are not quick our project is not quick to implement and and that's you know frustrating for some but it does mean to say that there is some opportunity for for plans to be revised as we move forward to make sure that that things are joined up brilliant thank you very much um the, num the numbers of attendees are started to thin out i hope that's not a reflection on uh, on our answers richard um i'm sure it's not um but we've, we've got a couple of uh, last questions i think before we start to bring things to a uh, conclusion uh, the question question i'm going to ask now from catherine the plan contains a proposed road closure of st andrew's road to traffic opposite the station is it possible this closure could take place earlier than the rest of the project implementation in 2023 um so we've had that question before um um so i if if there's a strong desire for that the the um the it's certainly something that we could look at aga go on you want to come in before i yes i was just going to say it's it's not as easy as as that there are some other wider implications in terms of traffic impact and uh traffic orders that is going to be at, at this stage is planned to be a part of the wider sort of project and, and the process uh, it's it's something that um, 
we, we wouldn't separate at this stage. It's, it's a bit, there's, there's a bit more to it. Um, so at this stage, we understand it has been asked for, like, like Richard mentioned, and we have actually anticipated that, but it's, um, it's best done as, as a wider project. There, there is a lot uh, of analysis and a lot, a lot of work um, that needs to be considered before this is done um, in isolation, essentially. Okay, I mean that's that. So I think what we'd, you know, we'd certainly need to conclude that that analysis and that and that assessment, and perhaps potentially once we got to that point and considered it as a whole, you know, it could be, you know, there's a lot of different things that we're proposing here. They'll have to be sequenced in a particular way potentially, and it and it could be something that's at, at the front of that pack, if you like. Um, but um, but that again is an intervention that will be subject to more formal consultation. It's uh, again, it's not a sort of it's not a definite, um, but it does seem like there's a number of people who would support that. So thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, just uh, just uh, Tim, this is one for you. Um, I think I didn't spy this actually when I was uh, when I was looking at your slides. But the image of Enfield Town Station Plaza showed a sign "Welcome to Enfield." You would expect to see a sign like that on entering the borough. Why not say "Welcome to Enfield Town"? wonderfully observant yeah they're probably absolutely right yeah so we'll, can, we'll, change, can we'll, change, we'll change that in the visual i think that's that's a good point absolutely yeah there we go okay well i think um i'm gonna i'm gonna uh give it give it a little bit of time for the submission of any more questions i'm pretty sure i would say there was one um one comment i i saw um, yeah. which was about um linking to history and linking to past I think someone mentioned about uh, we should link up with the Enfield History Society, which we are, which we are planning to, or have, we have something booked in. I think we did, I think Arga, I think we do, we should do. From, I was asking, I was asking Arga. Sorry, we call sorry, pardon. With the um, Enfield History Society, I, I seem to remember we have something booked in with them. As part of the uh, other discussions, yes. So yeah. we, at some point, we would be yes. Yeah, we absolutely appreciate kind of the, the wealth of history from like kind of the, the new river loop, uh, the hot houses, the um, market square, every, everything, everything, uh, the rich history that is in We did a lot of analysis on that. So we think it's very important to incorporate that within the designs and, and they will come through the detail. So rest assured that's something we're, we're definitely focused on. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to dish out a, a slap on the wrist to all of you because uh, as a couple of our correspondents have, uh, have said, it's the Enfield Society. So not the Enfield Historical Society, the Enfield Society. So consider yourselves thoroughly uh, chastised. Um, Ollie, can then, I? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, please. Yeah, go on, Richard. Um, yeah. I, I was just sort of scanning the, scanning the comments um, and sort of noticed the comment from John. Um, now it's a positive one, but I'm not highlighting it for that. But he says that um, I, he really liked nearly all the ideas presented here, which sort of, sort of the inferences that, that not quite everything. And I'd just say that, you know, that's, I, I think the nature of, of a project like this is bringing forward, you know, quite a lot of change. It's going to be impossible for us to, to design and implement a scheme that everybody thinks every item of it is, is absolutely fantastic. And what we're trying to do is work within a significant number of constraints, balance a whole range of different needs by, by different people in different groups and, and bring all that together um, to deliver a scheme that's, that's a, the best that we think it can be, uh, you know, for the town centre, you know, not just for now, um, but you know, but for decades to come. So it, it is a challenge. We will go through on a journey of of working out the best way of achieving that. And hearing from the community as part of the engagement um, is is a really important part of that process. Thanks, Richard. And I think Linda's hand has gone up again. So I'm going to make this the, the last question. Um, so Linda, you should be able to unmute and ask your question. Hi, Ollie. Um, I I didn't actually want to speak i've submitted the same question twice and it doesn't seem to have entered the question stream and what seems to have happened is when i've submitted my question the hand goes up automatically so i don't quite know why okay I... no well feel free you have the floor my question is fairly simple we've got these concrete um planters they actually surround they they surround the curb um all the all the way from uh the London Road edge of um, Fountain Island, round to opposite um, NatWest, apart from where there are uh, 
bicycle racks interrupting the planters. There are then three planters across the pavement at um, NatWest. Now, I'd welcome anything that increases the flexibility and functionality of, of, um, of Fountain Island, but just as a, a starting point, how do the traveling markets gain access to Fountain Island if there are now planters all the way around? How, how are they supposed to get their, um, uh, their little, not cabins, you know, their sort of square stalls, but yeah, they're quite substantial mm. and, you know, Richard's given us assurances in the past that uh, the, you will be careful not to reduce the amount of space available to the, uh, the traveling markets, the French, Italian, Spanish, etc. markets, but this seems to exclude them completely. All right, so Linda, think, thanks for that. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Richard, just for thought, just for thought. Linda, was that, was, that your, was that your only question or did you have anything else yeah, just no, as no, we no, wrap no, up? I've got, got the same question twice. Brilliant, thanks, Linda. Richard, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to you in that case. Yeah, I mean, just to reiterate what I've, what I've said, what I've already said before, is that you know this is the, these are temporary measures that 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 remain flexible because they can be very easily uh, moved to to help us activate that space in the in the short term for for um, licensing for local businesses to extend the amount of space that they can they can have for for people to participate in outdoor dining. So in the in the immediate term particularly considering uh, the context that we're in i don't think we're necessarily looking right now at using that space um you know for further outdoor markets now colleagues in economic development and other areas of the council are looking at uh, you know a uh, plans of events and different activities that are going to be happening in the town yeah. centre and it's not to say that um, that those type of events have can only happen on Fountain Island because that's where they've happened before um, you know there are, there, are, there, are, there are other spaces and other opportunities but right now um, there's none of those markets planned I don't think one of those markets necessarily would be um, you know in terms of priorities I think what we want to focus on is, is supporting the local businesses who are currently based in the town centre uh, and creating more space uh, for them to for, for people to eat and drink outside so that's the focus and that's what we've done but as I've said temporary measures opportunity to learn uh, see what works see what people like um, and can in, inform the, those longer term plans so all that flexibility um, still remains okay great uh, and just a lot just a last question from uh, RD uh, when when will St Andrews clo uh, Road be closed I think we sort of slightly touched on that we don't have a specific time but uh, Agar or, or Richard, if you just want to very briefly touch on that before we wrap up. Yeah, I, th I think what we're saying is that it would be it would be sort of part of those longer term plans. We're looking at sort of implementation, um, you know, starting 2023. Um, so, so so that order and, and where it falls in the sequence of things that we implement, you know, is, is up for discussion. Okay, well, I think I'll, I'll wrap up uh, proceedings uh, for uh, this evening and just uh, just to say thank you very much to everybody that has uh, attended this evening and submitted questions or, or put some bits and pieces into the chat. This uh, session is going to be uploaded to uh, letstalk.enfield.gov.uk uh, forward slash Enfield Town uh, alongside all of the historic webinars and, and, and events that we've done. Nod at me, Liz, if I've got that that right. I think I've got that right. Yeah, that's a, that's a nod. Um, I'd also encourage you to, to go onto the website and uh, read the um, the phase two engagement report as well. Um, and um, I think we'll call, uh, call proceedings to an end. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>